This video is sponsored by Brookwell's Parts and Accessories, helping us to help you to stay on the road. Okay, hello and welcome back. Right, so we're on the home stretch with uh, putting this differential back together. We are going to have to use a dull gauge. I know there's some bush mechanics out there, however the dull gauge uh, is uh, vital really for setting up the uh, backlash between the crown wheel and the pinion. When you're experienced, you can probably feel it. However, you do need a uh, space between there. Don't forget, metal expands when it gets hot. Differentials get hot. And also, you need to make sure the oil gets uh, between the teeth. Otherwise, you've got problems. Right, this is the reason for setting backlash. So we've done our pinion height. That is uh, vitally important. Just be mindful it might not be perfect. And we won't know until we've done a, a tooth impression test. But basically, yeah, we want to mount this part, okay, which is a diff carrier in the crown wheel. And of course, you would have chosen which center you're actually going to have in your diff carrier, whether it be an LSD or just one of these open diffs or a four pin diff. All of this is exactly the same. So basically, you've got your bearing uh, races and they will be clamped down with uh, bearing caps, okay? These are machined and uh, they're machined together. So as I said before, you want to make sure that they're marked and uh, marked clearly. You don't want to mark them in pen just in case you wash them off. And basically just uh, put them down finger tight for now. What I will say, and this is very important, is the uh, thread can go on the piss, which means you can't actually wind the adjuster in. So be mindful of this, okay? So basically what we want to do is bring the crown wheel into the pinion so it is at the right distance apart. We also want to set the bearing end float. Now it's a zero end float on this particular setup. It hasn't got a preload, even though it does mention that in the manual, and it, it hasn't got movement. Okay, so the adjuster caps, you can screw them in uh, with your fingers, but you do need this tool because I would recommend uh, just nipping the caps up so you can wind these adjusters in. This pushes the bearing race in, and uh, of course you want to bring it in both sides. Basically what I do, left hand side first of all, and then the other side, nip it until it's rolling and not binding or dragging. What ultimately we need to do is get zero end float, but it's not really important at this point. We want a backlash between uh, 0 0.10 to 0 0.17 of a millimetre, which is uh, not much. But initially what we want to do first is to uh, torque up the caps to 90 newton metres, as recommended in the workshop manual for the uh, Discovery uh, Differential. Okay, and uh, do all four of them. Basically what we're doing here is making sure that the... Uh, housing isn't going to move about when we check for run out this would be one of the first checks we want to do um, because if we've done everything else set it up and then realize that the crown wheel might have uh, a problem then we have to take it all to bits and set it all back up again so basically what we want to do tighten the bearing caps up and check the crown wheel run out and we'll check it for run out and it should not exceed a 0 0.10 of a millimeter and if it exceeds that, then possibly just turn it uh, by 180 degrees, bolt it back up again. And basically, if you remember, we didn't put stud lock in this. We just bolted it up, torqued it up. And well, what I'm going to do now is check for run out. As I said before, we look for the lowest point first and then a zero in the dial gauge. OK, this is a magnetic uh, mounted one and you can see... Even though it does spring every now and then, it's just an even surface on there. But the maximum is um, not actually that much. And this one is under uh, 0 0.1 of a millimetre. OK, so we want to check the run out to make sure the crown wheel isn't um, buckled or the housing isn't buckled. OK, so you can see by the dull gauge exactly how much we're getting, which is perfectly acceptable. And I'm happy with that. If you do have a problem, as it says, the uh, mounting flange, check it for burrs, grit that's stuck between the mounting faces. If it's buckled or damaged, it'll be the differential housing. Um, and this probably is the gear housing, which 
will need to be changed. If you've changed it and then you've still got problems, it's highly unlikely it could be the uh, Cranwell, but if it is, then I'm sorry about that. That needs changing. Anyway, once you've got it right, you can then take the crown wheel bolts off, um, use some Loctite, and then torque it up to 58 Newton meters. And if you remember in the uh, last video, I showed you how to torque it up. Uh, just do it by diagonals. And a little trick here, um, we're using Mafco nut lock. We could use a thread lock blue. Okay, Loctite 243. Um, basically, just drop a little bit on it and let it soak right all the way around the threads at the bottom there okay and then that's good enough thread lock is absolutely brilliant for uh, not only keeping corrosion out but it stops the uh, bolts winding out so that's just a little tip there just leave it for a little while and then um, do your job so before we go any further the uh, bearing cap bolts have been untightened Right, so I've tightened the left hand nut uh, adjuster up and now I'm tightening the right hand one up. This is a little bit loose, but I'm just quickly checking uh, by hand as I wind it on and off as a demonstration is to show you how much um, this can go out. Okay, now this is ideal. This is 0.10. 0 .10. And that's the exact backlash that you want, that sort of movement, okay? Um, I've actually got the flanged bolt down, and uh, I'm moving it. You can hold the uh, diff flange pinion by hand, and then just slightly move the crown wheel to get your movement. But you can see what I'm uh, looking for. As I wind it in, this is uh, not acceptable. It needs to be wider than this. Okay, so once we've had that set and we do have a clunk there, that is about right. Okay, as I said, it expands with heat so the, the gap will get smaller. Um, what you want is a zero end play, okay, or end float. Now we have one side set, we can knit this up just a little bit more, okay. And what I do is just nip it till I feel a little bit of drag. Okay, and then let it off a little bit. Well, actually, there's quite uh, a lot of uh, movement to be done with this. Okay, I can't feel any drag at the moment. The drag would be a preload, which we which we don't really want. We could have a, a small amount of it, but what we're looking for is uh, no end float, simply. So if you know how to do vehicle wheel bearings, this is about the same, okay? So as I've adjusted, one side and the other, and this was, uh, the caps were fairly loose. I'm now gonna just put a little bit more tightness on them, and then I'm going to recheck the uh, backlash, okay? As you move things about, uh, you lose your uh, accuracy, so, ah, you can see that. All right, that's, that's actually gone out. So what I'm gonna do is now move this side in, okay? And if you notice, we've got some pegs here, and you also have an arm, and you want to make sure that the uh, holes line up so you can uh, bang your, your dowel pegs in, okay, and to, to lock the adjuster. But I'll keep going here. You can see that it gets better the uh, the, the further this is pushed into the uh, the pinion. If it gets a bit too tight, then you have to slacken off the other side at the same amount that you wind this in. Okay, so I'll keep going. Okay, and that's getting less. I could actually say that that's acceptable. Um, so anyway, what I did was use a, a 4B tool, bolted this uh, onto the flange and then clamped it to the uh, vise so it was completely solid. And uh, yeah, that's the way to go. Now, so what we've got to do is another test, all right? This is actually quite nice now. So again, what we're going to do for the final time is, uh, well, hopefully this is the final time, is to torque these down to 90 newton meters, each one of the caps, and hope it doesn't distort the, the uh, bearing race like we had before. Okay, so what we have here is the diff, which we can now check for tooth um, engagement. And uh, basically, there is a chart in the workshop manual which will tell you uh, whether your pinion's too high or whether it's too low. 
details you can see here this is the discovery 2 workshop manual and just a note of interest the crown wheel backlash on the d2 is between 0.07 and 0.17 Okay, so you got the information in the Discovery 2 manual, which you can get online, borrow it, beg it, steal it, whatever. What we're looking for is a fairly even pattern that's uh, towards the toe, which is the inner side of the crown wheel. Now, some people will do this in three areas, um, but if you check your run out and you know your run out is uh, not excessive, then it's going to be fine. Okay, so I'll look for the imprint on here. What you need to do is go back to one of the first videos and see how I've done this. But basically, you can, if you can see where it's just moved the uh, uh, Prussian blue, then it, to me that looks actually quite good. Okay, there's a decent tooth imprint in each one of these. So I'm happy with this. This is, um, well, it's almost finished. Okay, you can see on this side here, it's uh, towards the heel, and it's a fairly even print as well. Okay, I can't really do much more than that. You, if it looks bad, and you'll need to use a reference in a workshop manual, then you'll have to readjust the height of the pinion. You either have a latch over, or uh, you have uh, dowel pegs which lock the adjusters into place. You may have to compromise slightly on your backlash so you can line the holes up, but line the holes up and then put your adjuster locking mechanisms in. You want to put your locking mechanisms in after you've torqued the caps down, obviously. So anyway, um, last thing to do before we go and fit this to a vehicle is to put the uh, seal in on the pinion. The reason we have the seal out is because if we have to readjust everything then you'd have to take the seal out and waste it all right so this is the last thing to go in a land rover when they say uh, do the pinion set the height and everything else then put the seal in and then clamp it up fine but uh, it doesn't always work now i did have an issue with this this new flange here okay um this was binding when i uh, clamped it up and it's actually to do with the uh, shit shield it's slightly bigger than the original. Now, um, I took it off and it was fine, but you can see how much difference there is. What I would do here is just take a grinder to it and uh, run it around and then it will fit fine, okay? I don't know if you've had problems with these. I've had problems with these. And I don't know if it's because it's a Brit part or what, I don't know. I'm not blaming the make of it. It's just, it just happens to be one of those anomalies. Okay, but you do need a shit shield on there. Right, so Cortigo uh, seal. Uh, we'll get this fitted to this and then we're nearly home and dry okay and i'm happy about this because i'm this is a drag dong for quite a long time right so don't forget we've already got our uh, preload shim don't leave it out when you put the bearing back in for whatever whatever sake because because otherwise it'll just be a pain don't forget the bearing then the seal and uh, i did actually put the seal on and forgot the bearing i'll admit to this i put my hands up Okay, so I've wasted the seal, and now I've got to uh, put this one in. Seals are one use only. Once you start bending them to get them out again, then they're screwed. Right, so uh, I've showed you how to put these seals in um, crudely. You can get the proper tool for it, um, which has a step which will uh, give you the right depth. However, we don't have that luxury, so I'm using this uh, socket which has been cut down and has the right um, size to uh, hit the seal in the right place, okay? Now, you can see I'm not actually using the head of the hammer, I'm using another part of it, okay? Because I'm a skilled man, I can do what I like with hammers. With regards to uh, flanges, um, this one's a, a four bolt one, so it's okay. Uh, where the seal run is uh, in good condition, so that's all right. I'll use that again with a new seal, no problem, all right? And when you're using a bolt, make sure it is thread locked. I know it's quite tight, but the thread lock actually uh, also stops water getting in and seizing it. Okay, so we'll talk this up to either 100 newton meters or 150, depending on what differential you've got. I'd always advise to get data for the differential that you are rebuilding because they do differ slightly. Okay. So there you go, Mr. Muscle Man. That's 130 newton meters, and that's in uh, good condition. It all turns well, so there we go. All right, no problem. Yeah.
Happy about that?